Welcome to our science and technology briefing program. Today, we're diving into some gripping stories from around the globe. First up, a tragic landslide in Nepal has swept two buses into a river, leaving at least 60 people missing and only three survivors found so far. Rescue efforts are being hampered by blocked routes due to the monsoon season's heavy rains. Our hearts go out to everyone affected by this natural disaster. In the world of tech, Japanese conglomerate SoftBank Group has made headlines by acquiring the UK semiconductor startup Graphcore. This move is part of SoftBank's strategy to strengthen its position in the AI and chip industry. Despite financial struggles, Graphcore will continue to operate as a subsidiary under SoftBank, marking another significant acquisition following ARM Holdings. This is a fascinating development in the ever-evolving tech landscape. Lastly, Kathy Wood of ARK Investment Management has shared her insights on the future of innovative technology stocks. She highlights Tesla as the biggest AI project on Earth and emphasizes the potential of robotics, energy storage, and AI to transform industries. Wood's bold predictions and strategic investments are always a topic of interest for tech enthusiasts and investors alike. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage of these stories. The Globe and Mail reports a tragic incident in Nepal where two buses carrying at least 60 passengers were swept into a swollen river by a landslide early Friday morning. The disaster occurred near Samaltal, about 120 kilometers west of Kathmandu. Only three survivors have been found so far, who managed to jump out of the bus and swim to safety. Continuous rain has hampered rescue efforts, and landslides have blocked access routes to the area. A third bus was also hit by a landslide, resulting in the driver's death. Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal expressed his sorrow and concern over the recent spate of natural disasters, including a landslide that buried a hut and killed a family of seven near Pakhara. The monsoon season, which lasts from June to September, often triggers such devastating landslides in the mountainous Himalayan country. Japan Times reports that SoftBank Group has acquired British semiconductor startup Graphcore in a bid to bolster its investments in chips and artificial intelligence AI. The financial terms of the deal were not disclosed but Graphcore will continue to operate as a SoftBank subsidiary with its current management team. This acquisition follows SoftBank's 2016 takeover of Arm Holdings, another UK-based chip designer. Graphcore, known for its innovative IPU chips designed for AI applications, has struggled to gain a foothold in the market despite a valuation of $2.8 billion in 2020. The company reported $2.7 million in sales against $204.6 million in losses in 2022. CEO Nigel Toon has been critical of the UK government's lack of support for the tech industry and highlighted the unmanageable costs of competing with giants like Nvidia. SoftBank plans to invest further in Graphcore and expand its employee base in the UK. South China Morning Post adds more detail to SoftBank's acquisition of Graphcore, noting that the British semiconductor startup has faced significant challenges despite its high valuation and initial investor enthusiasm. Graphcore's innovative IPU chips were designed to compete with Nvidia's offerings but the company struggled to secure customers and posted substantial financial losses. CEO Nigel Toon acknowledged the need for more funding to survive and cited the high costs of competing in the AI chip market. SoftBank's acquisition aims to provide the necessary investment to help Graphcore succeed. Toon confirmed that former employees would not profit from the sale, as the offer price was less than the investment capital raised. The acquisition aligns with SoftBank founder Masayoshi Sun's strategic shift towards AI and semiconductor investments, leveraging the successful public listing of ARM. The Globe and Mail, Kathy Wood, the influential founder of ARK Innovation ETF, has been a prominent voice in the investment world, especially with her bold bets on disruptive technologies. Wood's ARK Innovation ETF, which skyrocketed during the pandemic with a 153% gain in 2020, has faced significant challenges since then, including a 12% decline in 2024 amidst broader market gains. Despite these hurdles, Wood remains steadfast in her commitment to Tesla, which she believes is the largest AI project on Earth, and emphasizes the potential of underappreciated sectors like robotics. She highlights the convergence of AI with gene editing technologies, pointing to successes like CRISPR therapeutics, and underscores the transformative impact of new sensor technologies in making robots safer and more collaborative in industrial settings. Wood also warns against the risks of concentrated investments in broad indexes, advocating for the potential of small and mid-cap stocks to outperform in a broadening market. South China Morning Post, Tesla's much-anticipated robotaxi event has been postponed to October, a decision that has caused a significant drop in Tesla's stock, marking its largest decline since January. 
The delay, intended to give the design team more time to refine the prototypes, was initially set for August 8 but has been pushed back internally. This postponement has caused a ripple effect in the market, with shares of competitors like Uber and Lyft surging. Elon Musk, who has been a vocal proponent of autonomous vehicle technology for over a decade, has shifted focus to this project, prioritizing it over other initiatives like the production of a more affordable electric vehicle. Despite the setbacks, Musk and Tesla's engineers remain optimistic about the future of full self-driving, FSD, technology, even as the company faces challenges in vehicle sales and production. Nikkei Asia, South Korea's economic growth, heavily reliant on exports, needs a strategic overhaul to address the productivity gap between SMEs and dominant conglomerates like Samsung and Hyundai, according to a recent OECD report. With SMEs accounting for 85% of employment, their untapped potential is crucial for sustaining growth amidst a declining fertility rate. The OECD recommends streamlining the myriad of support schemes for SMEs to make them more effective and transparent. The report also suggests broadening eligibility for paid parental leave to combat the country's record low fertility rate, which has hit 0.72 births per woman. Despite these demographic challenges, South Korea's growth prospects remain positive, driven by exports, particularly in semiconductors. The report notes a decline in inflation and hints at potential monetary easing by the Bank of Korea to support economic stability. South China Morning Post. Joint military activities around Japan by China and Russia have raised alarm bells in Tokyo, with the Japanese Defense Ministry labeling them as grave concerns. The annual white paper from Japan's Defense Ministry highlights the escalating threats from North Korea, which frequently conducts missile tests near Japan, and the growing military cloud of China. The document underscores Beijing's regular naval presence near disputed islands in the East China Sea and its ambitions as the greatest strategic challenge to global security. Japan plans to bolster its defense spending to match NATO standards, aiming for 2% of GDP by 2027, although the declining yen may impact purchasing power. The white paper also notes the increasing normalization of Chinese military activities around Taiwan, the intensifying US-China rivalry, and the heightened risks associated with AI, cybersecurity, and disinformation. In response, Japan is strengthening defense ties with allies like Australia, South Korea, and the Philippines, the latter with whom it signed a key defense pact allowing troop deployments on each other's territories. This move aligns with US efforts to counter China's expanding influence, despite Chinese officials accusing the US of attempting to create an Asia-Pacific NATO. Financial Times. The summer season, filled with blue-ribbon sporting events and long holidays, might seem like the perfect time for a portfolio boost, but history suggests otherwise. Despite the Northern Hemisphere housing 99% of the world's public companies and being on the brink of a two-month holiday, summer often underperforms in the stock market. Over the past 30 years, the MSCI World Index has shown that July and August deliver significantly lower returns compared to the rest of the year. The average return for these months is only 0.15% compared to the annualized 7% return. This underperformance is particularly notable during major sporting events like the Euros and the Olympics, which often fall in these months. The phenomenon is partly attributed to the vacation schedules of junior and senior portfolio managers, with the latter taking longer breaks later in the summer, leaving less experienced managers in charge. Despite the lower volatility in stock prices during these months, the inclination to sell or the lack of luck among those managing funds during the summer leads to poorer performance. The advice to sell in May and go away only holds if the duration of away is manipulated. Instead, buy in July to fund your August getaway might be a more rewarding strategy. With the focus on AI stocks, there are opportunities in non-dash, magnificent seven earnings in America, as the rest of the S&P 500 shows signs of positive earnings growth for the first time in six quarters. This makes it an opportune moment to consider buying during any downturn next month. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. 
To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email.